Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please take your seats. And a very warm welcome to all of you, to our, our graduates in the hall and up here on the stage, uh, and to the families, friends, and supporters, uh, to all of our graduates who will be uh, converted to Strathclyde alumni and graduates in the course of the next 45 minutes or so. It's great to have you here in the Barony Hall, uh, one of the jewels in the crown of the Strathclyde estate. Uh, through each year, we graduate around 2,000 students. Uh, but the most important group of students are those in the hall with us today, uh, where we'll be celebrating their fantastic achievements as a result of their hard work. Uh, we very often have a, an in, a, a embellishment of these graduation ceremonies, and, and this morning is one of those occasions where we're delighted to welcome back to the University of Strath Strathclyde uh, Mr. Nigel Whitehead, who is Group Managing Director of BE Systems. Uh, and you'll hear a little bit more of Nigel's fantastic professional achievements and his contributions to the UK and further afield. So we will start the ceremony with that and then we'll proceed to graduating our students and then I'll tell you a little bit more about what's been happening at Strathclyde in recent months. So with that, I will declare this congregation open and invite Professor David Nash to introduce our honorary graduate. Thank you very much indeed. Principal and Vice-Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you Nigel Whitehead. Nigel Whitehead is a Scot and a graduate of the University of Strathclyde. He was awarded the coveted Montgomery Nielsen Medal to acknowledge that he achieved the Top Student Award from the Department of Mechanical Engineering when he graduated here in 1984. Nigel worked for Rolls-Royce while he was a student and completed their four-year student scholarship programme at their apprentice school in nearby Hillington. He thereafter joined British Aerospace when he graduated. He's enjoyed an illustrious career working in a variety of roles in British Aerospace, which became BAE Systems when it merged with Marconi Electronic Systems in the year 2000. For the last nine years, he has been running the UK defence businesses of BAE Systems. This part of the company has an annual turnover of some £7.5 billion. He is responsible for a team of over 32,000 people and works with over 7,000 suppliers across the UK. He leads a business that conceives, designs, builds and supports in service a variety of military aircraft and land vehicles, musicians, munitions, nuclear-powered submarines and complex warships. His notable career achievements include leading the team that introduced the Eurofighter Typhoon into service and the team that developed the stealth aircraft, Tyrannus, the most advanced aircraft yet built in the UK. He is currently responsible for the astute and dreadnought submarine design and build programmes, as well as the BAE Systems majority share of the new Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier programme, which left port for the first time just yesterday and is now starting its sea trials. Closer to home, he is responsible for BAE Systems shipyards in Glasgow at Govan and Scotston, where the new offshore patrol vessels are in build and where the Type 26 frigates are being designed and will start manufacture during this summer. These major programmes will ensure the continuity of defence-rated engineering expertise across the UK for decades to come. Nigel is well known for his passion for engineering and for the delivery of outstanding capabilities to the UK Armed Forces and to those of our allies. He's also very active in roles beyond his day job. He's the chairman of the White Holland Industry Group, a charity that promotes cross-sector learning between the public and private sectors. He also chairs a membership organisation of 130 companies called Team Defence Information that works to progress the information management challenges across the UK defence enterprise. He's a prime mover in the Defence Growth Partnership, which was launched by the Prime Minister in 2012. He also takes a leading role in the Productivity Leadership Group, which aims to address the productivity challenge faced by the UK. It was for his role as Commissioner in the UK Commission for Employment and Skills that he was awarded a CBE in the Queen's Birthday Honours List in 2015 for his services to skills and vocational education. Nigel is one of life's enthusiasts and is a recognised leader in his field. 
He is a Fellow of the Royal Aeronautical Society and a Fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering. He says that he's achieved a lot more than he might have expected to achieve, but this university would claim that with our endorsement back in 1984, we were well aware that Nigel was off to a flying start when he graduated and set off for a role in industry as a trainee aerodynamicist. Principal, in keeping with the university's motto of being a place of useful learning, Nigel Whitehead has embodied and delivered useful learning throughout his career and at the very highest level. It is with great pleasure, therefore, that I ask you to confer upon Nigel Whitehead the degree of Doctor of the University, Honoris Causa. I create you Doctor of the University, Honoris Causa. Many congratulations, Nigel, and welcome back to your alma mater. Thank you very much. Well done. Well, good morning and a particular thank you to the Principal and Vice-Chancellor for uh, this amazing honour. I am more than flattered to be here today and I had no expectation when I graduated from here 33 years ago that I would end up coming back into this forum and especially in these circumstances. To be quite honest with you, since I've left university, I've had a ball. I've had a great time. I was lucky enough in the first instance to have an idea of what it was I wanted to do when I graduated. I wanted to be an aircraft designer. I was quite seized with the idea. So that's what I did. And you know what it's like when the more you know about things, the more interesting they become. Well, I became interested in aeronautical research and flight testing and stealth and manufacturing and selling and contract management and project management and working overseas and politics and economics and so on, and my life sort of expanded and grew from there as I understood more about the context of the job that I was doing. I also realised that it wasn't just aircraft that were great, it was also ships that were cool as well, particularly the big ones and the fast ones. And submarines are an absolute marvel, they're a cathedral to engineering. It takes about a decade to build a submarine, it's an exercise in precision engineering. We build 7,000 ton Swiss watches in the form of a submarine, but it's a major industrial challenge where we bring together people to construct these amazing machines. But it strikes me that they're just ordinary people, people like you and me, doing extraordinary jobs, and it's a privilege to be able to contribute in that environment. As Professor Nash has just said, um, I've been involved in the Queen Elizabeth program, in fact, for the nine year, last nine years, air, new aircraft carrier. So it was some relief last night that uh, the first in class Queen Elizabeth actually went under the fourth road and rail bridges at about midnight last night. Uh, I was going to say under cover of darkness, but that wasn't deliberate. It was just a case of when the tides were right. Um, what you probably don't know and you wouldn't read in the press this morning is something I can tell you uh, from my observation, which is that the carrier has been put together by a young team a young team of essentially Scottish people, and I can also tell you that two of the most senior positions on the project are occupied by Strathclyde mechanical engineering graduates who have essentially put together a major part of the programme. But you'll read in the press this morning that the aircraft carrier is some four and a half acres of floating real estate, and uh, it is 14 storeys high, 280 metres long, and 65,000 tonne ship. It's not a small undertaking. It's a floating airport, a floating aircraft maintenance hangar. It's a hotel and an office for 1,600 people. It's a command and control centre for the military. It's also a humanitarian relief ship with an onboard operating theatre and a, a controlled negative pressure zone which isolates contagious diseases in the event that it has to be used in that regard. It's also a fighting ship and it's something that the nation will be very proud of for the next 50 years or so. And I've been very proud to have been involved in that. But I thought about what I'd like to say to graduates this morning, and in particular what I would have liked to have known when I graduated. So just a few brief observations. The first one I've already introduced to you as an idea. Do something that you enjoy doing. That way you'll find the energy, the determination, and you'll do things well, and it'll feel right. 
The second thing is that having been an apprentice, my contention is I've never stopped being an apprentice. Every day is a learning day, every day is an opportunity, and that's a mindset that has served me well. And third observation, indulge me just for a moment. My first maths lecture here was in Livingston Tower in October 1980, and we had a rather short-tempered maths lecturer called Mackay. I never found out what his Christian name was, he was just Mackay. And his proposition on the first morning was to say to us, to us, here's the deal. You can have either 60 minutes of calculus or you can have just two minutes, but I have to have your undivided attention. And I'm going to give you some guidance and some personal philosophy. Which is it going to be? And naturally, we opted for the two-minute option. And he delivered a pearl, a pearl that rolled across his desk, rolled across the table, hit me in the forehead and lodged in my brain and has been there ever since. This is what he said. He said, it's not the clever students who do well on this course, it's the organized students. Organize yourself, organize your time, organize your study, get familiar with the maths, be practiced at it, and it will come as second nature. Be organized to be successful. And I found that the philosophy didn't just work for his course, it worked for the whole of the degree that I did. And I have subsequently found that it's worked in the working environment as well, and indeed every aspect of life. So be organized was the message. The final thing I want to say is that in the job that I do, I have to recognize that every day I actually use something that I learned at university. Now that may seem like a bit of an obscure idea of sitting in the position you're in today, but I find it's true after 33 years, it is absolutely true whether it's an approach to problem solving or some detailed understanding of metallurgy or structures or whatever. It has served me well, and it's caused me to recognize that the course that I did was well prepared, clever, and well thought through. And for that, I thank Strathclyde. It's prepared me to do some amazing jobs and jobs that I've so much enjoyed. So thank you, Strathclyde. And to you, the graduates today, my personal congratulations, and I wish you every good fortune in whatever it is you decide to do. Thank you. Principal and Vice-Chancellor, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Doctor of Engineering for research in the Faculty of Engineering, Ross Beasley. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for research in the Department of Biomedical Engineering, Lindsay Jane Miller. <laughs> Chi Tzu Wu. <laughs> For research in the Department of Chemical and Process Engineering, Javier Cardona Amenguel. Alessia Centi. <laughs> David James Connell. <laughs> Scott Davidson. <laughs> Eden May Bayungan de la Pena. Paul Matthew Duncan. <laughs> Craig Allen McAnally. <laughs> Rachel Sheridan. <clears throat> For research in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, Daniele Barbera.
Michael Eric Basta. <laughs> Catherine Gracie Orr. <laughs> Georgios Carafilias. <laughs> Christopher John Lowe. Thomas Michael Nevelainen. <laughs> Jose Luis Ruderos Fernandez. <laughs> Massimo Vetrisano. <laughs> Constantinos Zografos. For the degree of Master of Engineering in Chemical Engineering, Gavin Lewis Andrew. <laughs> Emma Armstrong. <laughs> Christopher Stewart Arnold. Katie Baird. <laughs> Sam McGregor Beaton. <laughs> Andrew Johnston Black. <laughs> Finn Ian Craig Blake. Christopher Boyle. <laughs> Connor David Bradley. <laughs> Mary Brown. <laughs> Ewan Alexander Bryce. Katie Elizabeth Baird Buchanan. <laughs> Robbie Harry Kane Cairns. <laughs> Samantha Cannon. <laughs> Nicholas Maxwell Carr. Matthew Archibald Crichton. <laughs> Alison Day. <laughs> Sean Thomas Doherty. <laughs> Ellen Sigridur Edvaldson. Callum Dingwall Fraser. <laughs> Robbie Galt. <laughs> Fraser Cameron Gillis. <laughs> Joshua Matthew Holder. Jennifer Holt. <laughs> Amy Houston. <laughs> Kevin Kiernan. <laughs> K. 
Campbell Care. Sharan Khan. Eagle Kirsati. Rory John Lang. Alexandra Lawson. Paul Michael MacDonald. James Craig McPhee. Ross James Mackenzie. Sam Mackenzie. Dominic McMahon. Finlay Curry Macmillan. Melissa McNichol. Connor McPhee. Alicia Martin. Graham Alexander Martin. Alex Mathers. Ryan Miller. Jacob Mills. David Montgomery. Christopher Alexander Mullins. Ashley Newlands. Tara Naomi Nickel. Richard Andrew Pressa Parry. Fraser William Ramsey. Bethany Ross. Ryan Ian Albert Ross. Stephen Ernest Scott. Muhid bin Shahid. Adam Sifton. Scott Charles Steele. Scott Stoddart. Christopher James Sweeten. Andrew Cameron Tate. Emma Tate. Alexander Taylor. Julian Shaw Tinto.
Tit Shing Tsan. Harriet Eve Turnbull. Sean Watson. In Aeromechanical Engineering, Craig Michael Blythe. Greg Burnett. James Cairns. Natalie Shannon Cassidy. Joel Luis Fuentes Tobin. Gemma Catherine Houston. Jack Alexander Hughes. <laughs> Louis John Alexander Kerr. <laughs> Dominic Lang. <laughs> Daniel McDermott. David Alistair McDermott. <laughs> Connor James McDonald. <laughs> Ross Stephen McDonald. <laughs> Callum Johnston McMenamin. Daniel Michael McRae. <laughs> Muhammad Amza bin Nordin. <laughs> Amir Ali Purnasa Kachbaz. <laughs> Fraser Andrew Proud. Colin Allen Rushworth. <laughs> Stuart Charles Sharkey. <laughs> Usman Sheikh. <laughs> Jonathan Smith. Neil David Stokes. <laughs> Abhishek Thapa. <laughs> Kiri Ruth Wallace. <laughs> Lewis Wynne Wiley. In Mechanical Engineering, Matthew Donald Aitkenhead. <laughs> Ross Anderson. <laughs> Ahmad Amirul Ayman bin Azimi. Thomas Robert Duncan Bartlett. <laughs> Nurjana Binti Basri. <laughs> Ma
Maxwell Richard Brown. James Ewan Cole Dalman. Craig Deans. Liam Dillon. Robert Alexander Gold. Adam Harris. Craig James Haswell. Matthew Heron. Callum Simon Edric Hicks. Shan Megan Hughes. Ross Andrew James. Dominic Douglas Taylor Johnston. Flynn James Lahendro. Paolo Lizzeri. Connor Paul McCarthy. Robbie McCreeth. Daniel John McDade. Callum James McIver. Andrew McKenna. David Paulus Mann. Andrew Martin. Jamie Michael Meldrum. Danielle Ann Milne. Callum Nickel Park. Ewan Patrick Rycroft. Amir Salim. James Setford. Campbell Simpson. Benjamin Joseph Kieran Turner. Colin Robert Waddle. Lewis Craig Wood. William Paul Yates. In mechanical engineering with aeronautics, Ahmad Kurshid Fami bin Abdul Qadir. Mace Markovic.
Stephen Schindler. Adam James Stevenson. Molly Murray Stewart. Aaron Thompson. In mechanical engineering with financial management, Christopher George Bendel. Michael James Buchan. Matthew Duncan Campbell. Jack Lucas. Jonathan Edward Fotheringham Smith. Fraser James Webster. In mechanical engineering with international study, Ewan Charles Clark. Callum Robert Downey. Michael James Murray Gray. Matthew Brian Lynn. Grant Ian McConaughey. Rachel Isabel Margaret Milne. Michael Nielsen. Andrew Noble. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering in Biomedical Engineering, Abenaya Murugapan. Gemma Egan. Emma Hayashibara. Caitlin Louise McLean. Helena Jane Watson. Timothy Robert Kelly. Shona Mairead Ross. In chemical engineering, Rebecca Munn. Walid Khaled Bada Omar Al Kathiri. Miyada Mohammed Aldala Albari Alba Mawani. Samantha Boyd. Martin Ian Dunn. Andrew Gus Ferguson. Megan Harvey. (laughs) 
Samrat Makopadye. Rachel Catherine Murphy. Soma Siraj. Thomas James Skelton. Robin Sutherland. David McDonough. Morvan Whiteman. In aeromechanical engineering, Craig McCallum. Craig Murray Maxwell. In mechanical engineering, David MacArthur Clarkson. Gavin Andrew John Lavery. Chu Jing Yu. Cameron Rubithon. Suhail Salem Aida Salem Alameri. <laughs> Nufal Kamis Salim Mohammed Al Nofali. <laughs> Scott Rice. Song Hao Sung. <laughs> Muhammad Noor Rehan bin Muhammad Noor. <laughs> Vijay Raja Shrikanthan. <laughs> Rina Wishahi. Hugh Martin. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Prosthetics and Orthotics, Connor Samuel Brown. Gwen Lynn Griffith. Miller Leesk. Amy Jessica Marshall. Jaya Patel. Sandra Wheeler. Laura Jade Wilson. <laughs> Miriam Ali Reda Ahmed. <laughs> Tori Taylor Alexander. <laughs> Samaya Salim Saeed Al Kanuni. Gadir Ali Mosin Al Lawati <laughs> Ali 
Nadira Issa Hamed Al Shueli. Claire Carson. <laughs> Tobias Corner. <laughs> Melissa Halan. <laughs> Carrie Car Gi Lai. Jonathan Leach. <laughs> Rachel McBride. <laughs> Caroline Mary McCloskey. <laughs> Lewis Andrew Miller. Katie Ann O'Neill. <laughs> Laura Jennifer Smith. <laughs> Paula Thompson. <laughs> Hannah Wilson. Morgan Cassidy. <laughs> Isaac Farnham. <laughs> Naomi Susan Hanlon. <laughs> James Stuart Morton. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering in Chemical Engineering, Kevin Nolan. <laughs> Katie Perry. <laughs> in Mechanical Engineering, Stephen McNeil. Well, what a mammoth session that was. You've all got repetitive strain injury with those applause. But uh, I would also like to give a very warm welcome to uh, friends and family who are in the back of the hall, uh, another, another viewing room. Uh, this morning has been so popular uh, and we're graduating so many people that uh, I'd like to give them a very warm welcome as well. So we're glad that you're able to witness the occasion. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me reiterate our warm welcome to this wonderful ceremony, a day that none of you will forget. Uh, it marks the successful conclusion of years of hard work, and now you've graduated in front of your friends, your colleagues, uh, and your families. But today we also welcome visitors from all over the UK, and indeed from all over the world. We are delighted to see you in today's celebrations. And of course, as we reflect on the recent political dynamics that we've uh, witnessed in Scotland, across the UK, across Europe, and indeed uh, across the Atlantic, it's worthwhile acknowledging the key roles that universities are playing and must continue to play. And Strathclyde is no different. In fact, we try to lead from the front. We believe that freedom of thought must be valued and encouraged. We're a place that is both tolerant and inclusive, and where people of diverse national, cultural, and social backgrounds come together to enjoy an excellent education and also a shared student experience. 
We benefit from having staff and students from over 100 countries on and around our campus. That means we are socially progressive. We are a tight-knit community and one that is an exemplar for modern society. We are plural, we are multicultural, and we are enlightened. And in that context today, when we see our wonderful students come up here to graduate, it's a great honour for me to perform the capping exercise. It's a very simple but ancient ritual. Rooted in ceremonies derived from ancient China and the Middle East, it's there to mark personal transitions. And today has been an important personal and professional transition for all of you. And when I capped each of you, it was a formal acknowledgement of your hard work and ultimately your successful completion of your degree course. Appropriately enough for the engineering faculty, the great American engineer and entrepreneur Thomas Edison said that genius is 1% inspiration 99% perspiration. And uh, you heard from our honorary grad this morning. Nigel talked to you about that application of what you do. And uh, it was great for me to hear about the ongoing shipbuilding and technology on the, the Clyde. Uh, I'm a son of the sunny climes of Govan in Glasgow. So I'm a Glaswegian through and through. My father and my brother worked in the shipyards of Govan. So it's great to see things thriving uh, with the great drive from uh, companies such as BE Systems. But the historical motto of Govan is nihil sine labore, or nothing without hard work. And bear that in mind, graduates, as you go out uh, into the world, into your careers, into your new lives, take that ethos with you. Apply yourself, be excited and engage with what you're doing, but always apply yourselves meaningfully and with energy. And I embrace that ethos every day and I recommend that you take that approach into your future careers. Because today you become Strathclyde alumni and you're the latest of our torch bearers, if you will, like many generations of graduates before you. And now that all you've successfully come through, and I know you would agree, you couldn't have done this without the support, help and encouragement of your families and friends. And it's fitting we acknowledge their part in the successful completion of your university studies. Our graduates and the university at large owe them an enormous debt of gratitude. And as the first in my own family to have gone to university here in Strathclyde, in the engineering faculty as it happens, I know precisely the importance of such support. And I'm sure that today's graduates and our university staff would like to take this opportunity to thank your families, friends and supporters for all that they've done to make today possible. Thank you very much indeed. And for our academic staff too, this is a very important day because your success is their reward. Strathclyde has worked hard to provide you with a high quality education and a first class university experience for all of our students, regardless of background. So let me invite now our new graduates, our new Strathclyders, to join with me in thanking our staff for all that they've done to support you in your journey to achievement. Thank you very much. As you leave here today, you should reflect on the history of your institution. Uh, we were established in 1796, so we are acknowledging our 221st birthday this year. Uh, and throughout our history, the University of Strathclyde has remained faithful to our founding principles. We were established, and I quote, for the benefit of all mankind, and we were the only higher education institution established in Scotland during the time of the Enlightenment. That's an important distinctive feature of this place where we challenge whilst we continue to engage with society and make a difference to people's lives. And we are now driving our strategy forward in that same exciting spirit, making it wholly relevant to the 21st century. Our founder, Professor John Anderson, who was a physicist or natural philosopher as they would have been called then, had strong links with Benjamin Franklin, the American inventor and academic. And Franklin established or was one of the individuals establishing the University of Pennsylvania in 1751 under the motto of useful knowledge. And that approach inspired our founder at the time of the Enlightenment and resonates beautifully with their motto of useful learning. And never has this philosophy been so relevant since our establishment over 200 years ago. And this motto is known by our staff and students and take that forward today as well as it still defines our purpose as a leading international technological university that seeks to make a difference through being socially progressive. And across the campus, 
and in the buildings that you will have passed today on your way to the Barony Hall, our academics and students are making a difference. They are developing drugs to diagnose and fight disease and illnesses. For example, we currently have two drugs on clinical trials, and one of our spin-outs, Marinid, has recently had a multi-million pound raise to help develop drugs to tackle degenerative kidney disease, cancer and inflammatory disease. Strathclyders are also producing energy technologies and policy solutions to tackle climate change and establish a low carbon economy. Even at these days of climate change deniers, we have to do something that uh, makes a difference to the planet. We are also revolutionising global manufacturing and helping to make real the fourth industrial revolution, the so-called Industry 4.0. Our students continue their work in Africa to establish water and power supplies and to deploy healthcare systems to remote communities. They are bringing prosthetic limb technologies to those in need in countries such as India. We are working to inform public policy and national economic strategy. And our staff in one of our newer buildings, the Technology and Innovation Centre down in George Street, £100 million investment with uh, close working with industry, addressing issues in photonics and lasers, bio nano systems, smart grid and future cities. We mentioned Thomas Edison earlier on. He called his technical team and laboratories his inventions factory. Well, TIC is becoming our innovations factory. But most importantly here at Strathclyde, we are providing people with the opportunities to transform their lives and the lives of their families. And as I referenced earlier, we still attract many first-generation university students to Strathclyde. And finally, we are giving business and industry the tools they need to be more innovative, to promote economic growth, and to create jobs and to provide all of us with a quality of life that is more sustainable and healthy. And these are some of the reasons that we've had a terrific sequence of external recognition of what we do and how we do it. In recent years, we've been recognised at the UK Annual Times Higher Education Awards by receiving the UK Research Project of the Year, uh, work between our high voltage engineers and bioscientists, killing pathogens such as MRSA and Campylobacter and E. coli. We were UK University of the Year and then UK Entrepreneur University of the Year. In November, we were awarded the UK Business School of the Year. And last Thursday night in London at the National Awards uh, for the university sector, we were named as the UK Workplace of the Year and having the Strategic Planning of the Year. That's a fantastic achievement of my staff. And please join me in saying a big well done to all of them. Every six years or so, the UK government has a very forensic audit done of the quality of research in the UK. Every department, every discipline, and every faculty of every university, it's a major undertaking. And the last time uh, this was reported was three years ago, so we're in the mid-cycle. But I'm delighted to tell you that through that audit, Strathclyde was deemed to have the number one department in physics in the UK, number three in chemistry, four in biomedical sciences, three of our uh, engineering departments are in the top three, including departments that are on the stage today. Uh, we have the business school that's number one for research environment and our humanities and social sciences, particularly in government and public policy, law and social work, are in the top ten across the UK. So the Strathclyde tide is rising and it's bringing all of our votes with it. So Strathclyde continues to demonstrate a disproportionate impact on society, on economy and on people's lives. Mainly through all of you graduates, you are our most important output, well-educated, committed and ambitious people. Uh, bear that in mind uh, when you go and take up your new careers. You're carrying that Strathclyde banner with you and we want to make sure also that we make a difference through the translational work that we do here in terms of our research because we have to continue to be a driver for sustainable economic growth and we have a distinct role of that, not only just in Scotland but across the UK and beyond. Because universities have to remain to be seen as an investment in the public purse. Uh, we receive across the sector just over a billion pounds from Scottish Government and we translate that back into seven billion pounds worth of value into the Scottish economy. And certainly the achievements of the staff and students in the engineering faculty give me great confidence that these impacts will continue. So let me give you a few edited highlights because there are so many. This faculty is doing a fantastic job. So for example, Strathclyde was ranked first in the UK for medical technology in the 2017-18 Complete University Guide. 
And I'm delighted to say, uh, you will have heard uh, people have come across the stage, we had our very first graduates from our undergraduate biomedical engineering program. That's a fantastic program, very innovative, and our biomedical engineering department should be rightfully proud of producing a new generation of people that will really make a difference to people's lives. Professor Rebecca Lunn uh, of Civil Engineering uh, last week received an MBE in the Queen's uh, Honours List for her contributions to engineering. Just last week, the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, was on campus announcing a new £9 million investment in a lightweight manufacturing centre which seeks to revolutionise manufacturing techniques for aerospace, automotive and oil and gas by using composites, titanium and al uh, aluminium. One of our students in the engineering faculty, Joe Gibson, won the UK National STEM Award. That's a highly competitive achievement. Uh, work on a future aircraft carrier design. Uh, Nigel, that's something we should be talking about later on. Uh, that is the second time in three years that Strathclyde has come out with a top undergraduate project. Uh, and we also noticed that Joe won a personal £25,000 prize. So we're looking forward to meeting him later on as well to talk about sponsoring some major research projects in the engineering faculty. But uh, he was uh, an absolutely uh, exemplar of the qualities of Strathclyde engineers. Uh, late last year, we opened a new maritime safety research centre, the first of its kind in the world, aimed at improving safety standards at sea with our partners to the Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines and DNVGL. One of our mechanical engineers, Professor Massimiliano uh, Vassili, had an asteroid named after him. Now that's cool. Uh, the asteroid named 2002 PX33, just trips off the tongue, has actually now been named Max Vassili. And uh, he is, sorry, it is in orbit between Mars and Jupiter. And uh, Max, Max should be rightfully proud of all of that. Uh, our engineers have also been working on breakthroughs to understanding how brain damage spreads. Uh, Dr. Michele of Zagnone uh, studied work uh, to uh, identify previously unknown mechanisms in the brain, allowing networks of neurons to protect against the kind of spreading damage seen in cases of stroke and traumatic brain injuries. And just last week, we had the annual Strathclyde NASA Space School, where we had two astronauts, two space technicians, working with 100 of Scotland's most gifted fifth-year students. And over the past few years, we've seen 80% of this group coming to Strathclyde to study engineering and science. And whilst they were here, the astronauts also connected to about 2,000 school children, trying to get them excited about coming to Strathclyde and studying STEM. So I could go on, but I shouldn't. This is the exciting context within which you should view your awards. You are now graduates of a university that places students at the heart of all that we do. We value educational and research excellence, and we also support close connections with society at large and in the business world. And of course, with regard to internationalization, the world's best universities collaborate, compete, and contribute on the international stage, and we are no different. In America, we have large-scale and long-standing relationships with some of the world's finest, at Stanford, MIT, Caltech and NYU, New York University. In China, we are working with the top two, that's Tsinghua and uh, Peking Universities, as well as the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. In Singapore, Nanyang Technological University and the National University of Singapore. And we have a raft of strong partnerships with Europe's best institutions, something that will continue to be important in spite of the challenges of Brexit. We have to make sure that we remain a European country uh, we may change things in terms of the, uh, the market conditions and the uh, framework within which we operate, but our connectivity in Europe remains important. Talent movement, changing ideas, and trade exchange is essential, and Strathclyde is at the front end of making sure these relationships are maintained in spite of the headwinds that we face outside in the political world. But of course, our students have benefited from being part of a university that's internationally connected. This helps them emerge with the skills and the experiences necessary to make them successful and also to help Scotland play its full part in the world. They've been exposed to different cultures and traditions, but most importantly, our graduates leave here today understanding their obligations as global citizens. And as well as an impact on the world, we are a very grounded university in our city of Glasgow. I have the privilege of chairing the Glasgow Economic Leadership Board, 
I was the independent commissioner that reviewed Glasgow's economy just about six years ago. And in the same exciting vision of the merchants and the traders at the end of the 19th and 20th century, we're now rebuilding engineering, manufacturing, life sciences, finance and business, uh, built around what we're doing in this university and our fellow universities, but attracting private sector investment. We must drive that forward for our, our city and bring the citizens of Glasgow with us. We reta retain the position with some pride on behalf of my colleagues is that we're the leading Scottish research intensive university for widening access to our programmes for students for some of the more challenged communities in and around Scotland. And some 989 young people from those backgrounds came here this year because they deserve it, because they're smart enough, they're motivated enough, and they needed some support to get in here and pursue their academic career. And two weeks ago on this stage, the very first graduation ceremony of the season was undertaken by the Children's University, where I am the Chancellor of the Children's University. So we're 128 five to 12 year olds coming across this stage with their gowns, with their mortar boards, with smiles from ear to ear. Well, there's mothers and fathers sitting at the back of this hall, none of whom had been across the threshold of a university before. So feeling some trepidation in coming to this place on that day but we put them at their ease because their youngsters uh, should expect to come to university, to come to college, to realise their potential. Uh, and as I say often to my colleagues, you saw me stretching a few times today with these tall graduates. At least I get to kneel down to cap some of these kids, let me tell you. That's, that's a welcome relief. And they, as they left the hall that day, they left with a bachelor's degree from the Children's University with their little learning passports. So they go to the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery, they get a stamp. If they go to the Science Centre, they get a stamp. And when they fill it up, they get a bachelor's degree. And uh, those that uh, have the uh, commitment will go on for the next couple of years. And we'll get colleagues, PhDs from the Children's University. So we're going to have first year classrooms full of PhD students. That's going to be a good tutorial challenge for my academics. But uh, I should just move to a conclusion by saying if I characterize our university, your university, in 2017, I would describe as of having ambition, focus and momentum, with the agility and commitment to navigate the challenges that we face, not only in the sector, but through the political uncertainties that we all face. But our strategy, our delivery and our successes are the compass that we will drive this institution forward against. It's a privilege for me to lead this great institution with the fantastic support I get from my executive team and our broader community of academics, professional services and support staff. And I would like to think that our founder, John Anderson, would recognize what we are doing today as uh, the realization of what he sought to achieve during the Scottish Enlightenment. We now seek here at Strathclyde in our modern society to be an agent for positive change in Glasgow, in Scotland, in UK, and across the globe. But most importantly today, graduates, I think 2017 could and should be a vintage year. Make a difference, make us proud, and make a career that we can follow you on, on. So thank you very much for all of that. And with that in mind, as you leave this hall today, you're joining an international community of 170,000 Strathclyde alum. And whenever you do with your degree, and whenever and wherever you choose to apply it, remember that useful learning should also have you applying your knowledge for the benefit of others, making a positive impact for yourselves and the communities that you belong to, respecting diversity, valuing freedom of expression and thought, and reaching conclusions and resolving disputes through reason. These characterize the core values of your university. And I would say finally, on behalf of the university, I would like to extend my sincere congratulations to every one of you. I wish you every success in your future careers. Please stay in touch with us and let us know about your progress. Well done again, and please enjoy the rest of this very special day. Thank you.